Hey guys, it's me, BJ. Can talk about very basic Bible study. What's the first thing you need to know when you're doing your very basic Bible study? When you're studying the Bible, the first thing, the very first thing, well, you got to locate a Bible, obviously. You got to uh, know how to read, obviously. Um, now you're on the internet. You're watching my video, uh, most likely. <laughs> uh, so assuming that you can, you know, you know, you can get you a hold of a Bible, say a good Bible website, uh, you know, BibleGateway.com, BibleHub.com, Bi BlueLetterBible.com. Uh, assuming you can get you a good Bible, Bible website. Uh, assuming you can read, you know, or you can have somebody read to you or for you. Okay. Where do you start? The Bible's a huge book. People are like, I should start reading the Bible. Where do I start? At the beginning? Maybe. Some people start at the beginning. And then whenever they get part where they're like, this is too long, this is too much, they start reading the first one, like, I don't understand what in the world I'm reading. This stuff. So then they go online and they click and then they're like, wait, don't start in Genesis. The very first book is called Genesis. <laughs> don't start at the very beginning, start somewhere else. And then you're like, oh my goodness. Okay. We want to keep a little bit of the, um, of the pressure off. Why the pressure? The most important thing is to start reading. Let's give a very basic, very basic overview of the different parts of the Bible. Then when you do start reading, you won't be confused. Wait, why does this part look different from this part? Why is this history? But this is, I don't know, poetry. Um, they talked a lot in poetry in the Old Testament. What's the Old Testament? What's the New Testament? Why is it divided into two? I don't know. I don't know where to start. Let's just talk about some very basic stuff. And then we'll figure out a good starting place. Share screen. There we go. Open this bad boy up. Parts of the Bible. Okay. Most churches you go into, they're going to have stuff like this. In fact, that looks like a poster for kids. It's for kids. I'm not a kid. Hey, it's basic. I see these all the time because I do children's Sunday school. I've seen this chart before. Chart poster. It's usually laminated up on the wall. It looks cute until some kid, you know, sews a, a ball or or it shoves his sister's face into the wall, tears it all up, they make paper airplanes out of it. Crazy stuff happens. You got to tell their parents. That's Sunday school life for you. But hopefully we're teaching them the Bible and we're showing them the Bible. Excuse me. <clears throat> Over here, Jean Genres. Genres. Fancy word for what type of writing is it? The type of writing. Let's see if we can match some stuff. Law. Uh, no, no law over here. Okay. So genres in the Bible, but there's there's no. I mean, there's no law. This is just some basic charts. I went to Google, typed in parts of the Bible, went to Google Images. I got these charts. I thought they would be helpful, but there's no law. Hey, history. History slash narrative. Okay. History. Uh, there, there's some more history. There we go. Uh, prophecy. Prophets. Uh, prophecy. I bet the prophets got some prophecy in them. You got your poetry here. You got your poetry there. Epistle. Some of you probably know what an epistle is. Some of you don't. Kind of sounds like apostle. I heard somebody say, an epistle is not the wife of an apostle. Ha, 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 ha. And they laughed. It's never been that funny to me. You know. Letters. Epistle is a fancy Greek way of saying letters. Why Greek? They spoke in Greek. The New Testament was written in Greek. 
kind of like in America and in Canada and in uh, Central America, almost everybody speaks English. Now you go to Central America, tons of Spanish. You go to um, some parts in Canada, some French. All over the United States is, is mostly English, or a few parts are Spanish. English is almost everywhere. So what's that? You can go over to China. Lots of people speak English. You can go over to Europe. Everybody speaks English there. Go to Africa. Lots of people speak English. Greek in the area that they were at in the Middle East, Israel in the Middle East, everybody over there spoke Greek. In the Mediterranean area near Italy, uh, Germany, all those places, Northern Africa, they all spoke Greek. So epistle, fancy Greek way of saying letter. Easy enough, huh? Was that basic? I got into a little bit of teaching there. It's okay. It's very basic teaching. I'm going to say basic as much as I can. Uh, whatever. Apocalyptic. And wisdom. Don't see apocalyptic or wisdom over here. Hmm. Okay. Uh, since this is very basic, I got to tell you this. Right here is what you're going to see in most churches. This is the way you're going to see most Bibles. Let's go to uh, Bible, Bible Hub. You click on it. Look at that. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Number, Deuteronomy. That's the law. Okay. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, all that. First, second, Esther. Oh. Job and Esther, barely different colors. That's because everything between Joshua and Esther is history. Right there, history. Got your poetry. Got your poetry. Got your prophets here. Major, minor prophets divided up into two, but they're all prophets. New Testament, Gospels, and History, Letters, Prophecy. Gospels, oh, they put the Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, or Gospels, Acts is History. Gospels, Church History. Okay, but over here they put them together. That's fine. Then you got your Epistles and your Revelation, your Prophecy. Bible Gateway, it's kind of the same. Okay, Bible, uh, Blue Letter Bible, kind of the same. We're going to search. We want to search something. Food, advanced options, search a predefined list. Hmm. What's the predefined list? The whole Bible, okay. Wait, there's parts of the Bible, Old and New Testament, okay. It'll be okay. Pentateuch, that's the law. Remember, law, pente, five, one, two, three, four, five. Pentateuch, live the law. History, poetical book, wisdom, literature, and poetical books are actually the same. Uh, Job is, is wisdom, but it's a lot of poetry. Psalms, tons of poetry. Proverbs, hardly any poetry, but lots of wisdom. Ecclesiastes. Hardly any poetry, lots of wisdom. Song of Solomon, a long uh, poem about love, about being in love. So poetry and wisdom get you smart. Now the whole Bible has wisdom, but this is specifically written as a special kind of wisdom literature. Open up Proverbs, open up Psalms, try reading some of it. You'll see. Uh, Gospels, Luke, Acts, because Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and Luke are written by the same person. Oh, epistles and general epistles. So this is a little more, this one's a, a little more um, specific. You got your Pauline epistles and your general epistles, Johannan writings. But all these are epistles. Johannan. Right here. First, second, third, John. Okay. Look at that. General epistles. Paul's epistles. Do you have to know that? Not necessarily. When you open any of the books, it'll tell you who it's written by 
the epistles or the letters. Remember, this is just getting you a little familiar. You might be like, but BJ, which one do I do? I start with the prophecy of Revelation? Do I start with some history book in the Old Testament, the New Testament? Okay. We're going to talk about that, but don't worry. We'll get there. One more thing you got to know so you don't get confused. You go on the internet and you say, hey, guys, tech, 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 tech. I was watching this thing, very basic Bible. Huh, where should I start? He wasn't really getting very far. They then tell you something about Apocrypha. Apocrypha? Something about the Torah. The Torah? Like, what is that, you know? Okay. The Hebrew Bible, only the Old Testament. And Roman Catholic and Protestant Old Testament. The Hebrew Bible, look at this. It's in different order. Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's good. Joshua through... Ezekiel and Jeremiah. Wait, wait, wait. Major prophets. Ezekiel. Jeremiah and the prophets. Over here in the history, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and Isaiah. That's not actually history. That's actually prophets also. It's a Hebrew way of doing it. Why do they do it different? Why did we change it? I don't know. I wasn't there. I've been alive for... 40 years. This was a long time ago. Okay. Kedavim, books of truth. Okay. Truth. That's the wisdom literature. You got Job, Psalms and Proverbs, five scrolls, Song of Songs. See, it's a little different. Ruth, even though Ruth is in history. See, the Protestants, they tried to dumb, they tried to just make everything easier. All the history with the history, all the poetry and wisdom with poetry and wisdom. They didn't try changing it. So Protestant, that's what, we, that's what we've been talking about, Protestant. You can barely see it says Genesis, Exodus under there. Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, right there. History, Joshua, Judges, all that stuff through Esther. Additions to Esther. Usually Protestants don't have that. But you got Joshua, Judges, all that through Esther. Look at that. It pretty much matches. And the prophets. Yeah. Roman Catholic, they have more books. The Apocrypha. After Ezra, you got Tobit, Judith, additions to Esther. That should not be there. Only over there. Some money is messed up. That's okay. Uh, poetry and wisdom. Yeah, Job. Okay. Psalms of Ecclesiastes. Song of Solomon. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon. Ecclesiasticus. Yeah. They got more. Roman Catholics got more books in their Bible. You go to a Roman Catholic church, you can find you a Catholic Bible. It's going to have these books, maybe not in this exact order. Sometimes they kind of put them at the end, but it'll have the books. Most, most, most churches, though, you walk into just the Protestant Bible. What do I believe? I personally believe just the Protestant Bible. That's what I grew up with. If you want to get even more confused, look at all of these books. And look at if you're Greek, you got even more of it. Slavonic, you got some Greek and Slavonic. What? Lots of books. You can go to an Orthodox church. You can go to a Coptic church. It's a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, Russian Orthodox, uh, uh, Armenian. You're generally not going to see those. We're trying to stay simple. You just use the Protestant. You just use this right here. That'll do you good. That'll do you. A lot of good. Basically, what you're going to find whenever you pick up a book from the book from the uh, the the Christian bookstore, you order one off Amazon. Your friend says, "Hey, start reading the Bible." You say, "Where should I start?" And he says, "Here's a Bible." You're generally going to see these books. It's generally going to match stuff like Bible Gateway. Bible Gateway. Let's see. Oh, they don't even have any apocrypha. The Catholic. I wonder. New Catholic Bible. I wonder. I'm going to try something. Tobit. Because they're Catholics. Book of Tobit. Tobit chapter one. Catholic Bible. Roman Catholic. You can barely see the letters there. Tobit. But. I stick with the good old, you know, NASB or the 
I'm not Catholic, so I stick with the good old regular ones. I search for Tobit. Well, still gives me a book of Tobit, but no results. <laughs> so, and that, and most people will say that's called the Apocrypha. So, so BJ, you still haven't helped me. BJ, where should I start? Oh, I'm back. Where should I start? What should I do? What? I mean, these books are, you just showed me a lot of books. You just gave me a lot of information. You're talking about wisdom and poetry and prophets and teaching. You know, like, where should we start? Maybe we should start with teaching. Maybe we should start with poetry. Maybe we should start with the books. Here, screen share again. The epistles and the letters are going to have a lot of teaching. It's going to be difficult to understand some of it. The law will have a lot of laws. It'll just tell you stuff that they did, like um, kind of like reading an instruction manual almost. Genesis, though, a lot of stories in there. Some genealogies, like this person is the son of this person. This person is the father of this, this, and that person. This person is the father of this, this, and that person. And people go, they start getting bored with it. And, you know, a lot of people just skip it. And then they go to read the fun stuff in Genesis, like Noah's flood or stuff like that, you know. The book of Joseph, when he's in Egypt, he goes to jail. The Pharaoh's like, I had crazy dreams. He brings Joseph out of, out of jail. Joseph saves a day. That's the, that's the end of the book of Genesis. Exodus is Moses. So you got some fun stories, but then you start getting into some of the boring stuff, but it's some history. So actually there's some history mixed in with the law. Okay. The history is mostly history. Mostly. Prophets are mostly poetry, but they got some history mixed in. See how this isn't so cut and dry, you know. Letters are teaching. That's going to confuse you. History books, pretty fun. Lots of names. You could read that. Start Ruth, four chapters, nice and easy. Nice and easy, four chapters, simple stuff. Um, you'll see words you don't know. That's okay, you just read it. You know, um, Nehemiah, first person point of view. Uh, you can start reading Nehemiah, and he starts telling a story about going back to Jerusalem and building the wall. First person point, I like first person point of view. Um, Proverbs, Psalms, if you want some poetry, but it's kind of confusing. Proverbs, kind of dry, but maybe. Let's look at some Proverbs real quick. Proverbs. You are not anti-verb, you are proverb. A wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a mocker does not respond to rebukes. From the fruit of their lips, people enjoy good things. But the unfaithful have an appetite for violence. Those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. A sluggard's appetite is never, and, and there's a lot more like that. Some of the proverbs are a little different. Some of them are like lists of stuff. Some of them are telling us how, uh, telling stories about, like this one's about wisdom. Look at this. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? At the highest point along the way where the past meets, she takes her stand beside the gate leading to the city. At the entrance, wisdom cries aloud. To you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. Come on, dudes. Wisdom's talking to you. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, set your hearts on it, on wisdom. Listen, for I have trustworthy things to say. Wisdom has... Okay, so it's telling you about wisdom. Very poetic. Some of the problems are that way. Most of them are... Most of them are ill-gotten treasures have no lasting value, but righteousness delivers from death. The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry, but he thwarts the craving of the wicked. Lay the hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. What you do, you read the Proverbs, uh, read a few of them, and think about them hard. Wait, how does this match the rest of the Bible? How can I learn from this? What can this tell me about my basic everyday life? Proverbs are good for that. How can it help me love others? How can it help me be like Jesus? take take a few of the proverbs read them that way you know this stuff lots of poetry lots of stuff about god getting mad <laughs> you read this stuff and god sometimes he gets pretty mad at his people and sometimes he gets pretty happy lots of poetry but there's some history in here 
Lamentations, that's a strange book. Try reading it if you want. Jerusalem fell, and this guy just crying about it the whole time. That's fine. God was sad that his city fell. You know, represents us. Um, Daniel, everybody knows Daniel in the lion's den, you know. So Jonah. There, okay, okay. Ruth, four chapters, very easy to read. Jonah, not just because it's four chapters, but it's like a storyline and it teaches. Jonah, everybody knows that book already. Why not start with Jonah? I basically read it because I've already seen the VeggieTales movie and everybody talked about it. He's in a big fish. Agreed. But if you want to read the Bible, read it. There's Jonah. Four chapters. Fun story. Super easy to read. Teaches you a lot about God. That'd be a good book to start out with. Okay. So one, one, two in the Old Testament. Plus, try some Psalms. Try some Proverbs. If you're very philosophical, try some Ecclesiastes. But over here, you want to learn stuff, the teaching gets pretty confusing. You want weird visions and symbols, apocalyptic. You want that stuff, beasts with seven heads and, and angels blowing trumpets and pouring bowls of wrath and uh, ladies on the moon. I mean, on the, on the standing on the sun, she's got the moon and she's got stars all over her and she's having a baby. Then she's got to run from a dragon and, but it comes revelation kind of scary stuff yeah <laughs> kind of crazy stuff lots of symbols in revelation the same with zechariah um and ezekiel and daniel the same all the prophets do have some symbolism but the apocalyptic unveiling telling what's behind the scenes what's behind the scenes you read revelation it's just all symbols it's hard to understand. You can't be like, I know exactly what this means. So that's dangerous when you got a lot of symbols. But you can read it if you want. You can read parts of Daniel. You can read Zechariah if you want. Lots of symbols. Might not be so easy. Jonah's good to start with. Ruth is good to start with. Okay. Epistles, you know, kind of hard. You want to get used to just reading first. Revelation, I wouldn't do that. Okay, here we go. What's the Sunday school answer? Sunday school answer. I'm back. What is it? Okay. I heard a children's story. I think it's a joke. Okay. Children's pastor says, hey, we're going to have a children's sermon. Children come up there. The pastor says, okay, I'm going to talk about the pastor describes a squirrel. Maybe he's going to use it as an, a lesson. He's going to help. He's going to tell a story about a squirrel. I know. So the pastor says, hey, kids, I'm going to describe something. I'm fluffy. I'm, I'm, I'm brown. Have a fluffy tail. I like acorns, and I live in trees and chase my friends through the branches. What am I? And one kid raises his hand and says, I know the answer is Jesus, but it really sounds like you're describing a squirrel. What's the answer to everything? What's always the answer? What's the, uh, anything? Wisdom in Proverbs 8? Jesus. Jesus cries aloud. Jesus calls for us. Calls to all men. Says, hey, come listen to me. I will give you good stuff. He tells us foolish people, come on, dudes, wisen up. He teaches us how to do it. Jesus. So where would I suggest starting? Gospels are basically a biography of Jesus' earthly life. Was Jesus in the Old Testament? Yes, they didn't call him Jesus. He wasn't, he wasn't a him, you know, he wasn't a human yet. Wasn't a human. He's, you, you know, he comes down as different things. He, sometimes they talk to him. Sometimes they pray to him. They don't you know, think, think of him as Jesus, the guy who was on the earth and died on the cross. The Old Testament is hundreds and thousands of hundreds, many, many hundreds of years before Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So uh, Malachi, in fact, is 400 years before. So the rest of them, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, so that's a lot of theology. We're very basic. We're not getting into theology. So we're not going to, let's figure out how they thought of Jesus without calling him Jesus. You know, let's, uh, Jesus died on a but they didn't know that he was an angel. Was he? Was he a spirit back then? Or what, was he still God? Yes, he was still God. 
but that's the theology. We're just talking about where to start reading the Bible, very basic Bible study, and we'll start with Jesus when he was a human on earth. Lots of movies about the gospel, four gospels, lots of TV series about it, lots of people already know, lots of songs, super easy place to start. It's a story, tells stories about his life. It has lots of teaching. Matthew has lots of quotes from the Old Testament, lots of them parables, teachings Jesus did. It's, it's a, uh, arranged into five general uh, parts. So Mark, very short, only 16 chapters. 16 chapters. Ruth is four. Jonah is four. Proverbs, you can read the chapters separately. 16. Okay, hey, Isaiah, 66 chapters. Genesis, 50 whopping huge chapters. Look, 16. Easy. Easy peasy. Luke, uh, oh, 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 easy peasy, but but it's a, it's a very action packed. Jesus goes and does this. He goes and does that. He goes and does this. Here's a parable, but then he goes and does this and that. Here's a here's a teaching. This, that, and the other goes and then he dies. He's crucified. He raised from the dead. Hey, you know you're done. I mean, it doesn't mean you're going to understand it on the first try, but you're done. Luke is a little longer. Some things seem a little out of order. Out of order. What do you mean? Matthew, Mark, and Luke are pretty similar very similar. Matthew, Mark, and Luke will read the same stories. Some of them will be in a little different order. Some of them will have different details. Luke says, I wrote an orderly account. I wrote an orderly account. He doesn't mean chronological account. He means he puts things in orders. Maybe he puts things by themes. He puts teaching, like maybe depending on who he talked to. He said he talked to lots of eyewitnesses. Matthew, some things seem out of order, and he, he, but, but he's putting them in sections for easier teaching and learning. Today, we're like, no, we want it to be in straight historical chronological order. In the olden days, they didn't necessarily write history that way. They weren't worried with chronology so much. Matthew, Mark, Luke. That's good. Read one of them, read Mark, then read Luke. See the differences, put them together, you know. John, different. It's still the life and gospel of Jesus. Got more material. Wait, more material? Wait, so Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they kind of copy each other, it seems. They kind of tell the same stories. Give a little different details. Hey, where can we go to get more information on Jesus? John, more information on John's got even more stuff. Lots of teaching in John. Lots of theology. A lot of people say, first, read the Gospel of John. Uh, that's fine. I personally would avoid that one first. I would go to Mark. Just because it's the shortest. It makes it seem easier. You want a challenge? Read Matthew or Luke. You want a big challenge? Read John. <laughs> Acts. Church history. The early church you got. You know, the Apostle Peter, the Apostle Paul, the other apostles doing stuff. Since the answer is always Jesus, I would start off with one of the four Gospels. I would start off with Mark. You read that, you learn about Jesus' life. Then whenever you hit up Acts, it'll start talking about Jesus. And you'll be like, hey, that's about Jesus too. When you read some of the epistles here, some down there, they talk about Jesus. You're like, hey, I remember that. Okay, see... Jesus is like the key. Once you get a good understanding of all this, you read a little bit of Revelation in the beginning. Jesus is talking to John. If you go back and read this, maybe you could start finding Jesus in these. For now, if you want to read some history, if you want to read some poetry and some prophets, which is poetry, go ahead and try it. It'll just be a little confusing. To start with the mark, what happens if you don't start reading the Bible, you'll never read. Okay. The journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. I've always heard that. I've always like people say that. And I'm like, I don't want to go a thousand miles. That's people say the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. Is that that's supposed to make it easy? No, if it's a thousand miles, I'm not going to take a step. The journey of the infinite learning from the Bible starts with reading. One verse. Maybe we could say that. The journey of a of a thousands of Bible verses starts with one verse. When you're reading through the, the, the book of Mark, which is 
my recommendation to try Ruth or Jonah. Jonah's very uh, familiar, so that might be easiest. Just to, just to, you know, you open the book, you click on it on the website, just to get used to reading it, maybe Jonah. But you're going to start with Mark. You're not going to understand everything. You're going to be reading one verse and then read the next and say, why is this here? Wait, I don't remember the verse earlier. Wait, what did he mean by that? Wait, I need to go back and, no, I might as well start over again. No. Don't start over again. That's my recommendation. I have a friend named Lance. We did a Bible study together. It's on our website. He started over again in Genesis three, four, or five times. He never got anywhere. I finally said, look, just read straight through, even if you don't understand it. We got pretty far in Genesis. Now he's started Mark. He's reading half a chapter a day. He's on chapter like eight or nine. It's been a few months. A month. It's been, been, been two or three months. He's halfway through, maybe probably more. But hey, he's getting through it. He's getting through it. I started studying the Bible hardcore when I was like 21, 22. I told Lance 24, but that's okay. Like 21 and 22. Before that, I just, all my knowledge was from the countless multitude of sermons and, and Sunday schools that I went to. And I read a few books of the Bible, a couple, I was like, Jude, only 17 verses, one chapter. That's easy. I had no idea what it was saying. It was very confusing. <laughs> That's why I don't recommend Jude first. If you want, it's only one chapter. Very confusing, though. Um, so, I had read hardly anything. I hardly knew the Bible. Hey, BJ, be on my team for Bible trivia. Only if I remember what the pastor said in the sermon. Then one day I start reading the Bible. I'm like, this is awesome. I start reading Matthew. I didn't understand what it said. I couldn't remember. I found myself reading the study notes and not remembering. And I was like, here's what you'll do, BJ. Okay. You're going to take, I didn't have a computer. I had a book. I didn't have a phone. I had a book. You're just going to read two chapters every day. Next day, two chapters. The next, then you're going to do it again. That was my plan to read Matthew through twice, two chapters a day. I did it. Then I read Mark. I read Luke, John. Then I was like, I will just read each of the books of the New Testament. Why not? I just started reading through them. I had a little book that said, What is the Bible about? I read some of the little stuff. What is the Bible about? As I read the books. Now we're getting beyond basic. It's still pretty basic because I'm reading without really understanding. But I'm still trying to read. I'm just reading straight through. That's pretty difficult. Took me over a year to get through the old, the new, took me about a year and a half, two years to get through the old New Testament. I got to where after about three years of, because I'd already had lots of Sunday school and church behind me. So a lot of stuff I was reading in the Bible was very familiar. After about three years, I got to where I could open the Bible and be like, oh, that's Isaiah. And I could read it kind of comfortably. There were still books that I had no idea what they meant. I could open and go, oh, yeah, the gospel. Wait, where does he heal that person? I don't know yet. I still had to look it up in like a Bible dictionary because, like I said, I didn't have a phone. Sometimes I would go to the computer lab and look on the Internet. But it took a long time. 22, and now I'm 40. It's a long time. I'm very comfortable with it now. It's going to take a long time. Please don't let that deter you. God is pleased with your walk. He didn't say he's pleased with the amount of steps you take in your walk. He didn't say he's pleased if you run. He didn't say he's pleased if once, once you, you're at the beginning of your walk, once you get near the middle, then you can look back. You'll look at all that ground. At, no. God is pleased with your walk. He's pleased that you are a Christian, period. The dude loves you. He died for you. Read the Bible. You shouldn't have to feel guilty if you do or don't understand it. If you don't want to, it's fine. That's my suggestions. Okay, guys. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. We're just uh, keeping it real, you know, and got to say me a prayer. <laughs> okay. That's right. Lord God, you're awesome, amazing, wonderful. Help me not to feel overwhelmed when I'm reading the Bible for the first time, or even the fifth 
or 105th time. But Lord, when I am overwhelmed, because we know it will happen, help me to read through it. Give me the grace to read through it. You're talking to us through your Bible, Lord. Help us to hear what you have to say to us. Thank you for your death on the cross, resurrection, ascension into heaven, seated at the right hand of the, of the Father. That's so great. All for us and mostly for your glory, the most glorious and wonderful uh, ever. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, guys. I hope this very basic Bible helped. See you later.